Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Abdul Hasib. I'm working as an electrical engineer. Um, my question is, my father-in-law uh, father used to work as a banker. He worked for about like 30 years. Uh, then when he got to know about like it's haram, he resigned. But he got the benefit from it and uh, like the house and the car and everything, like can he avail it? And w what is the ruling on my wife and my brother-in-law? Can they avail it uh, as well? There are two views there uh, completely and uh, I incline towards the view that if the man has asked Allah's forgiveness and so on, then that wealth he has had, he may use whatever he's got up to now. And by the will of Allah, from the cutoff date where he's asked Allah's forgiveness, really and sincerely, we're not talking of someone who said, okay, one day we'll ask for forgiveness. In this case, it sounds very genuine that, you know, so inshallah, whatever has passed, may Allah forgive it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant goodness. And we hope that from that day on, it, it will actually... Uh, you know, the sustenance that does come in will not be of a similar nature. Wallahu a'lam. So don't issue rulings to say, I'm not going to go to the house and I don't want to do this. The men have made tawbah, the people have turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and alhamdulillah. Uh, also, we have a ruling in the sharia. Al-malu idha tabadal al-aydi tahur. You know, wealth, when it changes hands, it becomes pure. Like, for example, uh, a person might have earned uh, wealth through haram means say, let me give you one example. You have a superet or a supermarket or a little shop and someone walks into your shop and they might have, Allah forgive us, I'm going to give you just uh, any example of something dirty. Say for example, a prostitute who's earned money through haram, right? And she comes to buy water and milk and something from your shop. It is not your duty to ask her, hey, fill in this form, where did you get your money? The fact that money is being exchanged for something halal, it makes it permissible for you to eat that money. So she, like for example, someone comes to you and they have rented your house and uh, they happen to be non-Muslim. They are paying you for the house, but in that house, for example, uh, they will definitely, because they're non-Muslim, be doing certain things that are un-Islamic. That rental, some people say, no, it's haram, you can't. Ha it is halal, there's nothing wrong with it because they are paying you for the rental. The only time you need to worry is when they put up a big board to convert it into a nightclub or something, then you can want to terminate your contract with them because you don't want to be seen to be encouraging that. But if a person has, uh, you know, I recall one day I went with one landlord to one place and we went, entered the home and he went to collect the rentals and I happened to be a kid with him and there were beer bottles there. And I just looked and I said, and I was a young kid. As we grew older, we realized those were not even Muslims and the person collected his rent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us and forgive us. Uh, I hope I've answered. Like I said, there are two opinions. You will get some others who might say, you know, do this and do that. I incline towards uh, the next one because when you engage in tawbah and you ask Allah's forgiveness, Allah will forgive you by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and there are also various other reasons that I've said this. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant us goodness and may he accept it from us. Wallahu alam. Allah knows best. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair.